So it's uh, it was real difficult to to lose Bob, especially in such a, a, a senseless, uh, really stupid way. Uh, but Bob was a very very forgiving man, and his family um, pushed for what he felt he would want, and the judge respected that. And um, the, the kid that hit him was 15, so he was tried as a juvenile and got the max as a juvenile, but he'll be out in a few years. And I hope that uh, that he realizes what a gift he's gotten in having a second chance at, at still having his life. Uh, but that's, you know, I don't think Bob would have changed anything, even knowing that that would happen. He, he believed uh, what he lived and lived what he believed. And uh, protecting this marsh was a big part of that. So seeing that uh, that the preserve is protected in, in long term in public hands um, is something that I'm absolutely committed to to make sure that, uh, uh, the, that what Bob gave to us is is um, is honored. So, and there's been so many people over the years uh, that maybe they came for a cleanup for a few hours um, or spent years on the board uh, like Bob that have all contributed. So it's, it's nice to come out here and see, uh, I mean, the marsh itself has no idea if it had a consciousness of all the politics and wrangling that's going on around it, how controversial it's been. Yeah. So is that just this past summer or the summer before that's that? just past summer. Wow. Yeah. June, uh, was it Megan the 14th, 15th? Wow. I was struck down with appendicitis the very same day. Mm. So I went in for emergency surgery and didn't know what had happened, didn't hear about it till after. And I wanted to come home and come see him while he was still in the hospital. And I wasn't able to travel. And so by the time I got back, I finally went in to see him. And um, the day I went in, uh, the doctor and then his brother took me aside and said that uh, he had taken a real turn for the worse, mm -hmm. and that it's a good thing I came in when I did because they were preparing in the next few hours to turn off the machines, to turn off life support. So, you know, I at least got to sit at the bedside, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, say my goodbyes. And it's very surreal. I kept expecting him to open his eyes or crack a joke or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have not been able to bring myself to remove him from my cell phone or my instant messenger online or anything and he and I used to talk almost every single day and uh, I'd usually call him in the morning he wasn't a lot of a morning person <laughs> and uh, so I'd call him up in the morning and he'd fill me in on what's going on all over town hmm. and I'd fill him in on the status of what was going on with the marsh or other things and then we'd brainstorm ideas of what to do next and uh, we'd usually have to eventually stop because one of us had a meeting or something to go to but we enjoyed our talks so much he was a brilliant man and so it was, it was very invigorating to, to speak with him but afterwards I would I don't know how many times I caught myself calling him and there were a few times I got as far as the answering machine and, and I'd hear his voice in the answering machine and then realize he's not going to pick up and uh, I did that quite a few times I admit there were a few times later on that I just called the answering machine to hear his voice but uh, it just seems strange to have him gone. But, uh, I think that he would he would like a, no better memorial uh, or monument rather than some something in stone or whatever than to to have this place continue to stay wild and hopefully for people to to learn something from the way he lived and. Uh, do likewise. So we're hoping to, uh, I hope in this next couple of years here to be building and, and operating a center for sustainable living that'll promote urban gardening and uh, alternative energy technologies and, and living simply, which is what he did. He had very little electricity usage at the house and uh, he lived low in the food chain and, and uh, consumed little energy and he gave away such a large percentage of his income and of himself I mean, he, he survived just on some Social Security, and he probably gave away two-thirds or more of that wow. um, every month. They had a memorial for him, and 
I knew he'd been involved in a lot of other groups besides ours, but I had no idea how many. Um, there were hundreds and hundreds of people at this memorial. Uh, I couldn't quite tell how many, but it was a big auditorium and it was packed full. There could have been a thousand people there, wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. But they were from all across the city and so many organizations. And, uh, they handed out ginkgo seeds because he uh, collected the ginkgo seeds and promoting their health values. But he would pick them up from uh, the courthouse lawn and, and a couple other spots he knew of where there were trees that produced fruit. And uh, the ginkgo fruit smells terrible. <laughs> it smells like rotting meat. So whenever he'd pick these up and stick them in his pocket, he'd forget about them. He smoked a pipe, so I don't think he smelled any of it. And so if he'd been picking them up, you'd know it because he reeked. <laughs> he smelled just like the... His income and of himself. I mean, he, he survived just on some social security and he probably gave away two thirds or more of that wow. um, every month. They had a memorial for him and I knew he'd been involved in a lot of other groups besides ours, but I had no idea how many. Um, there were hundreds and hundreds of people at this memorial. Uh, I couldn't quite tell how many, but it was a big auditorium and it was packed full. There could have been a thousand people there, wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. But they were from all across the city and so many organizations. And, uh, they handed out ginkgo seeds because he uh, collected the ginkgo seeds and promoting their health values. But he would pick them up from uh, the courthouse lawn and, and a couple other spots he knew of where there were trees that produced fruit. And uh, the ginkgo fruit smells terrible. <laughs> it smells like rotting meat. So whenever he'd pick these up and stick them in his pocket, he'd forget about them. He smoked a pipe, so I don't think he smelled any of it. And so if he'd been picking them up, you'd know it because he reeked. <laughs> he smelled just like the, the rotting meat ginkgo seed. I'd say, Bob, have you been picking up ginkgo seeds again? Why, yes, how'd you know? <laughs> because you smell. <laughs> oh, well, they're so good for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then he insists I take some. So then I smelled like them too. <laughs> but uh, they handed them out, clean ones. And uh, so hopefully I'll be able to plant a ginkgo seed. Hopefully I have it grow and holding it. And I've taken folks out canoeing in the marsh and when the cattails are high in the, in the summer and you get down some of the side channels, you can forget that you're in the city and then a train will come by or something and remind you that you know, you're in the middle of an urban area. And I'll usually say something if I have a big tour group out or something that, well, that's the uh, rare endangered locomotive species that uh, <laughs> I actually had a group of, of teachers from Japan that I took canoeing one time. And it was great as far as tour groups go. It was the first tour group I'd ever taken out, uh, school kids included, unfortunately, in which I was taller than everyone in the group. So it was pretty cool. We were out there in the marsh, and I had been just telling them about the snapping turtles, and they were worried that, you know, if someone stuck their hand in, it might get, they might get bit, which never happens. And uh, not too many minutes after I had been telling him about the snapping turtles, I'd had to get out of the canoe because a couple of them had gotten stuck in a dead end. So I'm wading through there covered in muck and getting them unstuck. And I feel something pinching my leg. Mm. And it's pinching and pinching harder. And thinking about these snapping turtles, I'm like, oh, they're more afraid of us. And if it was a snapping turtle, it would, it would hurt a lot worse. But it was pinching really hard. Finally, I, I let out a yelp and I pulled my foot up and they're all concerned. Like, oh my God, something's attacking him. And I pulled my leg up and there's this little tiny baby crawdad barely <laughs> on me. So it felt pretty silly.